good morning uh, for making it uh, a point to come today uh, for this particular session uh, impact investing uh, we all really welcome you here this is a, a new topic as it relates to a somewhat new topic as it relates to uh, uh, people in the United States investing in India and so it's great to see uh, the initial interest is, is strong um, and it's really nice to see all of you and I look forward to uh, having conversations with all of you through the rest of the day. Uh, perhaps before I start talking a little bit about what the Global Impact Investment Network or GIN um, is about, I'm just curious in the room, how many of you would say you're very familiar with impact investing or currently involved in impact investing? Uh, I met you last year and I'm quite actually impressed to see that the interest in the meeting and uh, in understanding what's happening in India seems to be equally strong. So I've had uh, the opportunity to see both private equity markets in action. Uh, and I have to say, you know, initially listening to you and, and following the Indian private equity market over the last, you know, really the last 18 months, uh, it, is, uh, it is a pretty extraordinary story. Uh, of, of growth and, and underlying optimism in the market. So I, there have been ups and downs over the last six years, uh, but I think the overall perspectives uh, on the market are actually quite positive. For the people who don't know what Ampere is, uh, it's, the, it's the only global uh, association for private capital in emerging markets, and uh, the members basically manage about uh, a trillion dollars uh, across about 100 countries. So clearly, you know, Indian private equity VC market today, you know, is in a very different phase. What was earlier, you know, sort of overestimated is now sort of underserved. So, uh, you know, in my, in my view, uh, first I just want to caveat that all of my views are related to real estate uh, funds only because that's what we, uh, that's the business we're in. But um, as far as uh, what we've seen is there is investor consensus right now that is very clearly uh, favorable on the macro situation in India. There's no doubt there. Where we sit today, um, uh, we have a new fund that started investing, first investment in February of 2014, and the first investment of that global fund was in India. Um, we would be at about 30% allocated to India today, but as we stabilize over the next two or three years, I would think that'll be 10 to 20% will be uh, allocated uh, to India. Uh, 17 people walking, three cars in the same place, in a small narrow street, I'm not sure where you put another car. So I think these kinds of models are actually going to take hold in India in a big way. When you're in the States and you're doing a deal in India, you really have to rely on your advisors. Um, you have to rely on the lawyers um, because the laws are very different. Everything is different. Uh, the timing is different. Um, due diligence is different. And um, it, it really, it takes patience and it takes making sure that you have a really good team and boots on the ground. Exits are very important for us and our investment committee, when we make an investment, uh, one of the questions at the investment committee is always, what strategies are there for an exit? And, and we don't make the initial investment unless the team can make a case that there are alternative um, possibilities for exit because the last thing we like is to be stuck in investment, which has happened from time to time over, over our 35 year history. So I think what you see this time as opposed to the last, uh, you know, maybe 06 or 07 is that people realize that India is not a get rich quick scheme. Uh, it's a long term, you know, you need to be patient. You need to understand that if India is here and India is going to go here, it's not going to be in a straight line, but rather with a lot of ups and downs. Most pleasant thing about India is that it has a diverse number of companies across a whole range of sectors, which have you know both good and bad, bad management, but some really good, high-quality companies which you don't find in as broad and diverse a fashion. Uh, in uh, almost any other, if not any other emerging market in the world. So that, I think, is what makes India unique and attractive. The bust and boom cycle of the internet and e-commerce sector. So NRI interest in India continues. Um, I have not seen much change in it. It is volatile. Um, and it's to a certain extent less sensitive than a true foreign entity investment into India. 
they don't react the way saying, well, you know, these things happen and move on. So there's a big difference between institutional investors and individual investors. High net worth individual investors may be unsophisticated investors. And you need to be careful about that in terms of your diligence, your board structure and what you do. So should we close this? I think yes. We just, uh, Thank uh, you so uh, much. At the end of the day, I think we made up. Uh, because time, on time. <laughs> on time. Thanks, Nishit. <laughs> Thank you so much.